Hello, today we're going to talk about game development education, the pros and the cons, and what they don't teach new developers when they're starting out, which really stunts their career. Sound interesting? Stick around. Now in this video, I'm not going to recommend one action or another, I'm just going to give you the details. Uh, I don't want to be the guy that's responsible for you guys either foregoing your college education or, on the other hand, taking on 20 to 50k worth of debt, regretting it, and then I'm to blame. So, you know, disclaimer. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to go over the pros and the cons that I myself and other developers that I know have experienced firsthand, and hopefully that gives you some indication on what action you'd like to take regarding game development education. So let's get stuck into it. Pro number one for a game development course is that if you are a new developer and you don't know what you're interested in or what you're very good at, then you're going to get a chance to touch on every single facet of game development and you're going to be able to figure out exactly what you are best at. You're going to get the opportunity to explore all different aspects of game development and what really suits you and what you're most interested in. And because of this, I would say that doing a generalized game development course is a very good discovery process for any new developer that doesn't know what they want to do quite yet. Some of the things that you'll be exposed to are things like creative writing, game design, uh, game programming, 2D art, uh, 3D modeling, unwrapping, texturing, rigging and animating. If your course is big on collaboration, then you'll get yourself a chance to see what a producer does in a game development team. So having exposure to all of these different verticals of game design really is helpful for any new game developer. Another pro to doing a game development course is the range of tools that you'll be exposed to and you'll have access to, especially when you're in this early stage when you're learning what exactly you want to do. Any half-decent college is going to provide you access to student versions of necessary software that you're going to need to be a game developer, like the Adobe Suite or 3D modeling software like uh, 3ds Max or Maya. You may also have access to VR equipment for that line of development or graphics tablets or a 3D printer. All of these things and more really do help to kickstart your career and really help to shape what you are and what your expertise will be moving forward. But if you aren't given the chance to explore these things, then there is no opportunity for you to expand your horizons and really grow as a game developer. Third pro to going to a game development college is the range of industry connections that you could potentially get. Now it'll require a bit of homework and a bit of digging for you to identify who is your college partnered with, who do they generally get in to do talks, uh, all these sorts of things really should influence your decision as to whether or not you should even go there. A really good game development college is going to have partnerships with game studios or visual effects studios in the area. You should take the time to find out what AAA studios there are and indie studios that there are in the surrounding area and whether or not the majority or even some of these have partnerships with the college that you're looking at because this gives you an indication as to whether this institution is committed to getting people into the industry and creating those success stories. You should also find out what other industry veterans have come and done guest lectures or even just sat in on lectures so then you can see what kind of reputation that the school has among professional developers. But at the end of the day, the most important industry connection that you can make while you're at college is that of your peers. The people around you are the new wave of industry developers. What you have in your peers is a range of people with differing skills, but roughly at the same level, with the same aspirations and desires for success in game development. Now that is one of the secret gifts that a game development college provides you, in that they pair you up with game developers with different skills to create teams. This is how indie teams are born. So if you take the time to cultivate these relationships, it all adds up to being a successful developer in the end. There are a lot of pros to going to a game development college, but now we're going to move on to the cons. Con of going to a game development college is that you are required to learn to a curriculum. Now that curriculum might not necessarily work in your favor, and you might be required to learn skills which you are not necessarily proficient in, and you're not intending to use or focus on in your career. For example, you're a programmer, but you're required to do some 2D pixel art. 
how good are you going to be? Not necessarily. It's not your focus. Or if you're a 3D model or an animator and you're asked to be a creative writer, it's not necessarily within your wheelhouse. Learning skills within a curriculum can be beneficial, but most of the time it is just a data dump and it ends up eating into time that you could be spending improving and growing your chosen, your focused skill set. There are courses out there that are tailored to specific verticals within game development, certain skills like a games programming course or a games design course or a games art course, but they're not designed in such a way as to allow a new developer that doesn't know what they're proficient in and what they want to do within games development to really explore the breadth of skills that are within game development and the opportunity to discover what really works for them. So if you are doing a generalized game development course, then understand that this is going to be a bit of a sticking point and that you might be spinning your tires on learning something that you're not necessarily going to be fully interested in. You just need to hope that your teachers and tutors uh, have the awareness that this is in your chosen focus and that they are probably lenient to you with uh, exams or projects but chances are you need to reach a certain level of proficiency for you to get that 50 or 70 percent pass mark. The second con to go into a game development college is that you are potentially constrained by the skill level of the person in front of you, the teacher. Now you may luck out and you might find yourself being taught by a range of industry veterans that are all experts in their specific skills. What they need in addition to that is the ability to convey information in such a way that it speaks to you on your level so that you can take that information and turn it into knowledge. A real issue with game development colleges is that the teachers there may be industry veterans but aren't necessarily the best teachers. Now, if you find yourself in a subject with a teacher who can't necessarily teach, then you've got your work cut out for you. you what you should do is you should get the class curriculum and you should be working ahead. You should try to get ahead of the teacher so that when they do come up to conveying that information and teaching the class, you're already a few steps ahead and you can absorb some of that information a bit easier because you've done some of that self-learning. Now, if you don't have that opportunity, Google University is the best bet. Not every developer has gone to a college or a university. They were self-taught. So bear in mind that this is something that you can do as well, especially if it is your focus skill set. I'm not saying to undermine the teachers, but just give yourself the best opportunity to succeed as a game developer. And if that is with or without their help, so be it. You do whatever you have to do. Teach yourself if you have to. The third con, which is a big one, especially when you're doing a game development course, is that you don't automatically get a job at the end of it. Some schools have programs which place you into a studio as a, a part-timer or as an intern to give you that industry experience, but also to give you the best opportunity to get yourself a job at the, at the end of your course. You should find out what your school provides as a postgraduate. How do they enable you to get yourself a job within the games industry? If you do this research and you find it out early, then you're preventing yourself from failing in the future. Just remember that all schools and colleges, they exist to make money. At the end of the day, they are a business. They're in the business of providing people with certificates, which says they're qualified for the workforce. Now, they don't necessarily have to provide you with access to the workforce or a way into the industry. It looks good when a school can say that 98% of their students can have all gone into the workforce after graduating. Look past the facade of these numbers and statistics and see whether or not these students have been placed into industries where they are most comfortable in or where they desire to be in. Make contact with some of the ex-students. Everyone's got LinkedIn. You'll be able to see what job they've gone into post-education. Is it within the games industry or is, is it another sales job? You know, write them an email and find out what happened to them after they finished their graduation. By front-loading all of this work before you start education, you're really providing yourself the best opportunity not to fail or not to become a, a, a non-starter in game development. The biggest thing that game development colleges don't teach you is drive, motivation, and resilience. Now you can be a really, really crappy developer. You might not know how to code and do any art whatsoever. You might not know how to design a game properly. You might everything will look like stick figures. 
But if you have these three traits and you are persistent and you keep making and keep growing and keep training yourself as a developer, then eventually you're going to find some success. The schools, they don't teach these things. All they want is for you to hand in your assignments or your project in on time. They want you to play nice with people that you won't necessarily work very well with just so that you can get a tick on teamwork. I'd say that these skills are drastically more important than some of the skills that are taught within these schools. The skill of how to finish a game, how to market, how to build an audience, how to pitch to publishers, all of these things aren't taught or aren't taught very well and it doesn't set up developers for success post-study. So just be aware that if you are going to go to a game development school, then you're going to have to teach yourself these skills. And if you do teach yourself these skills, then you will eventually stumble your way forward into success. Now, I know all of that sounded scary and there is a lot for you to consider, but if you did get any value from this, then hit subscribe, like, and share it with anyone else that you think could really benefit from hearing this information. So in the comments below, guys, tell me what you guys have decided. Are you gonna go and study at a game development school or are you gonna train yourself and self-study? If you've already gone to a game development school, tell the people that are watching this video what you experienced and what to expect. So next week, guys, we're gonna talk about game development failure, what that means within the industry and what you guys can do to avoid it. So stick around.